Hi everyone, welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. The Model 3 was initially meant to be the affordable Tesla, but now it would appear the future Model 2 will take that place. The Model 3 is the popular mid-sized family wagon. Strangely though, the production cost of a Model 3 is about the same as a Model Y, despite the Y being larger and more expensive. That's because in the few years since the Model 3 launch, Tesla have learned so much, they were able to make the Model Y more efficiently than the Model 3. Then why don't they just update the Model 3 already? Well, they do make updates to it continually, but perhaps it's possible that to make all the changes, it's too much expense and downtime. However, in the purpose-built facility in Shanghai, the Made in China Model 3 is being produced significantly cheaper than the one in Fremont. This is because they learned so much about building the initial Model 3 production line in Fremont that they were able to incorporate these new efficiencies into the entire production process, something that is much easier to do at the start rather than to retrofit. In addition to that, Chinese labor is much cheaper than Fremont, and China has less regulation than California. Tesla also benefits from the economies of scale when it comes to manufacturing in China. As manufacturing there is so big, there are a lot more employees oriented around the industry. You're able to find specialists that are possibly not even available in the US. This all adds to production efficiencies and getting production costs down. As this was the case, there's been a lot of thought from some investors that they may do all the majority of their manufacturing in China and export all the cars from there like Apple do with their products. But it costs a lot less to ship an iPhone from China than it does a car. And Elon stipulated he wants a factory on every continent. And since this theory, we've seen the addition of new factories come online in other countries other than China. So it doesn't appear this will be the case. There has been talk of another factory in China on the West. I would imagine it's possible we might see something like that planned when the Model 2 is getting closer. China does serve the rest of Asia like South Korea and has also shipped thousands of cars to Europe too. And Europe is about to have its own Tesla factory in Berlin. However, this is just a Model Y factory. So it is possible that China will continue to serve Europe with Model 3s for the foreseeable future. We've only heard of the Shanghai and Fremont factories to produce Model 3. We haven't heard any discussions of any new Model 3 factories. And maybe we won't see any. If Tesla can sell three times as many Model Ys at what might be a 50% higher margin, then perhaps it does make sense to focus on that for now. Elon talks about how he is aiming to increase production by 1,000 to 10,000%. I know, totally crazy numbers, but if he could just double his production, then that alone would have a huge impact. When the Model X was introduced, everyone expected sales for the Model S to drop, but they actually increased. So although there will be customers who will now buy a Y instead of a 3, I think the overall attention created by Tesla just expanding, increasing their sales. Remember, Tesla don't advertise, it's mainly word of mouth. So the more mouths that have cars, the more words are going to go around. The Model 3 uses the 217 batteries, which have been brilliant so far, but the issue with them is that the battery will degradate, although it still looks like they'll be capable of travelling more miles than an ICE car though. And at the time, that was really what mattered. Now though, we've been spoiled with the mention of the million mile battery, or what a lot of people think, after a bit of math, that they might actually be closer to two million mile battery. What does this mean for the Model 3? Well, when Tesla start offering their V2G, the Model 3 batteries can't really handle it so well, as V2G requires a lot more recharging and battery usage, which would more rapidly affect degradation. The Cyberjet will be great for V2G with the new 4680 batteries and larger battery packs that are also likely to fa charge faster too. I don't know if it's possible, but perhaps Tesla could come up with some software for the Model 3 where it could be using V2G, it may be in a mild way, or it doesn't affect the battery too much, perhaps just takes battery power when it's between 30 and 70% charged or something. This would be one of the reasons that a Model 3 Robotaxi would cost a lot less than a Cybertruck Robotaxi. The Cybertruck has opportunity costs like V2G and transporting large goods. The Model 3 is basically a passenger vehicle and will serve very well for the passenger Robotaxi. The thing is, Tesla want a lot more Model 3s out there in the Robotaxi network. But when the time comes for the Robotaxi network to launch, there might possibly be more Model Ys out there as Tesla seem to be investing in Model Ys more than any other vehicle currently. So it would likely be a combination of Model Ys and Model 3s we'll see in the Robotaxi fleet. Everyone talks about the cost of owning an EV. It's significantly less than owning an ICE vehicle, due to not needing to service the car, change the oil, and, oh yeah, never buy any fuel. In addition to that, insurance through Tesla should be significantly cheaper than the competition too, due to Tesla having so much driving data and likely just how much more efficient and lower cost the entire operation would run. But none of these are actually the largest cost of owning a car. It is in fact depreciation that costs you the most. However, it would appear now, after a few years of data, 
that the Model 3s don't actually depreciate as much as other cars. Why would this be? Well, at the end of the day, it obviously comes down to supply and demand. Model 3 is still a very popular car. If people can get in one for perhaps five to $10,000 under the sticker price, with just a few miles on the clock, then they're happy enough. They just want in, and even a slightly lower price point makes a difference. But what creates so much demand for this used car still? For one, Tesla has an intrinsic value, unlike any ICE vehicle. This is due to the fact that travel is just so much cheaper in this car than an ICE car. For example, you could buy a car for $20,000 that costs $3,000 a year to run, or a Tesla Model 3 for $30,000 that costs just $500 to run. Then add in again the fact that consumers now know the cars don't depreciate much, actually then ends up making them depreciate even less, as more people would want to buy it, buy it if they know it holds their value well. As like we said, this is the most expensive cost of owning a car. Because if you bought a $50,000 car over a $30,000 car, that's $20,000 more and seems more expensive. But what if after three years, the $50,000 car was worth $45,000 still, but the $30,000 car is only worth $20,000? You'd have lost $10,000 on the cheap car and $5,000 on the expensive car. So which one actually did cost more? Well, if you're able to buy it with a mortgage, then you're perhaps paying around 2% interest over three years. If the difference in price is $20,000, then that's about an extra $1,200 in interest but you didn't lose the extra $5,000 in depreciation. So in reality, it was actually cheaper to own the presumed Tesla. In addition to this, all non-Tesla and non-EV cars are likely to start all depreciating much faster as the demand for them will transition more to electrical. In fact, it's possible that the demand could get so high that the prices of the Model 3s actually increase higher than the initial purchase price, especially if the car has FSD, as the price of this has already gone up significantly since its inception. Of course, one of the other reasons Tesla's don't depreciate so much is that if you buy a three-year-old Model 3 today, it still has just about all the same features as a brand new Model 3 you can get, due to all the over-there updates. Tesla's are not like traditional cars. It's a new paradigm of economics from, from cars. The future models we will see too, with more application, are going to be interesting to see how they unfold into the economy. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.